Morning guys, welcome to the Sterney Ridge Farm. I want to take you around, show you a little bit about what we're doing, but first thing we got to do is we got to eat breakfast. I'm going down here to the chicken coop, we're going to see if we got any eggs, we're going to have a little breakfast. Today I'll take you around the farm, show you the baby chicks, show you the progress of what's going on with them, show you a few more things on the farm, get a few tasks done. Today we've got to type up a contract, we're purchasing some more land over here, so farming not only is the hard work part, but the uh, portion of uh, typing up a land contract and getting some down payment to them, that's pretty tough stuff too. So got to get all our financial stuff together so we can go to the bank and pay an extremely high interest rate so we can purchase this land, which is pretty cool. But first of all, let's enjoy our good country living and go see if we got any eggs in our chicken coop. Right here's my chicken coop behind me. If you haven't seen the uh, video, I'll post it right here. Boop, boop, boop. Of uh, how to build the perfect chicken coop. The Farm Vlog series here has a whole bunch of videos about building the chicken coop, the thoughts behind the chicken coop, and then there's one final perfect chicken coop build. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and get us some eggs. Here's our little latch system. Razor up here. And right here's where they've been laying. Looks like we've got some eggs here. I think we're going to have to have a meeting because all I got is one egg. It's all right. I got one hen laying right now and all the rest of them are pretty juvenile hens. So hopefully they'll start laying pretty soon. It's just me and the wife. So I got three eggs from uh, last time we checked. So we got four eggs. That'll be good enough. We're cooking up some tenderloin from the pig that we killed a while back. If you look back through the vlogs, you'll see some of the videos about how to process a pig, take them from the field to the freezer. So look back at that video. I'll post it right here too. It's a series, three-part series. We're going ahead here and we'll open up the coop. The thing you got to think about with a chicken coop is you got to think about predators. That's why we have wire all the way up. We had predators get into our last chicken coop and killed 15 chickens in one night. I'm not sure what it was, whether it was coyotes or whether it was foxes or whatever. I hear a fox can climb. If you look, there are YouTube videos of foxes climbing trees. So maybe the fox climbed up and did that. Maybe a raccoon, maybe a bunch of raccoons. I don't know. But we're going to open up the coop here and show you inside. Got a little egg in my pocket going jangalangalang. Here's our little door. And we got the door, uh, we have a string on the door here to keep you from uh, overextending it. This is the inside of the coop. Basically, I put some shavings down. We have our feeder. It's hanging from a chain right here so that I can adjust the height if I need to. Um, we're, we're getting a little bit low on food, but we've still got plenty of food. And these are our nesting boxes right here. That's our roosting poles. So I put a little angle right here. You see this angle? That's to keep the chickens from pooping in the uh, nesting boxes. So keep the poop down right there. And we also have this sliding door. And you can probably see the string back here is a string that goes up. And that goes to a hook right over here with a little washer. And that way we can uh, raise and lower our door if we want to. Guys, a lot of thought went into this chicken coop, okay? I hope you can get some ideas on your own chicken coop uh, by watching the videos on this coop. There's so many things you need to think about. Ease of access for the eggs, ease of access for the feed, easy to clean. I'll show you how we set this up so we could clean it. So the height of this is set up for a wheelbarrow to go underneath and basically you raise this little guy out right here and all I've got to do is just rake it right into the wheelbarrow. Good stuff. So the only thing I didn't think about here was if my wife wanted to, she could easily lock me in the chicken coop if I got up in there. That'd be good punishment. Good little time out room, huh? So here's the chickens. They're doing pretty well. That's my rooster. His name's Vanilla Ice. Because he's got that little spoofy hairdo right there. I've got two roosters in here and the rest are hens. A few more things you need to know about raising chickens is if you have too many roosters, it can be really, really stressful on your hens. It can affect their laying production. It can also affect their feathers. So if you've got too many roosters, they'll end up mating with your hens too much and they'll be up on top of their back. A rooster jumps on the back of the female and holds their comb right here and mates with them. If you think about it, if you've got five roosters and you've got six hens, those hens are going to get worn out by those roosters. So you've got to thin your rooster population in your chicken coop in order to prevent harm to your hens. We've got our baby chicks in here in the garage and this is about week number two, two and a half. We'll walk in here and check it out. Here's our babies. Watch them start jumping. Hey boo! <laughs> These are our babies and they're meat bird type chickens. They're the Cornish Cross and they're also some white leghorn chickens. These chickens are starting to feather out and they're about ready to come outside but something we need to think about. It's supposed to be 19 degrees outside in the next few days so we're gonna give them a few more days. I know they're crowded in here 
but they're doing well. They're all warm. They're all fed well. And they have plenty of water. So I dumped the feeder out daily. And it doesn't hurt them to get a little on their back. It's kind of good for them. So I'll dump the feeder out. And then later after they eat that, we'll come back in and we'll refill the feeder and refill the waterer. So if you're new to the vlog, uh, I'll go ahead and post a link Boop, right here. This will be the link where we went and picked up the baby chicks. It's, I think it's called What to Expect When Expecting Baby Chicks from a Hatchery. So these chicks are for meat production, for our family, and they're also for egg production. The white leghorns are for our egg production, and the Cornish cross chickens are for our meat birds. So we'll harvest those meat birds at about seven to eight weeks old, and uh, then we got a little vacation planned after that. By the way guys, this is my anniversary week. Thursday is our anniversary. Um, we are uh, celebrating our third anniversary together, me and Mrs. Stony Ridge, so pretty rad. Happy marriage. Good to be with a good woman that loves me. Guys, you hear that sizzling? That's my tenderloin. Mm-mm. Came from our own hog on our own farm. Good stuff. Guys, we're on the way to sign the contract right now. I've got Mrs. Stony Ridge over here. Let's do. Got our anniversary coming up. Pretty excited about that. So we're gonna go ahead and get over here. Uh, I made up a generic land contract. If you, uh, if you guys look online, you can find generic land contracts or generic uh, contracts for purchasing real estate. Look online, Google it. There's all sorts of stuff out there. Something simple is all my lawyer needs to get started and all my lender needs to get started. When you're buying places that are for sale by owner, you're not going through a realtor and you don't have the advantages that the realtor provides for you. You also don't pay $4,000 to buy a $100,000 house, which is ridiculous. These guys got to make a living too, and I understand that, but we don't want to have to pay any commissions we don't have to. So we got our land contract. We're going to go ahead and get it to our uh, seller. Then we'll get that information to our lawyer's office and we'll get that information to our lender. So what do you think? We're excited. Let's do it. Stoked. Woo! It's real now, guys. We went ahead and signed our contract. We got everything ready to go. Uh, we're going to take our paperwork to our lawyer's office and uh, take our paperwork to our uh, appraiser and our uh, surveyor. We'll get the land surveyed. If you didn't see the video previously, it's right here. Uh, we went and we walked the property lines on this new property we're trying to purchase. Just one of the many steps that you need to take when you're buying land. Right now, we're going to go celebrate a little bit. We're going to a friend's house. His name is Clyde. And Clyde's having a little uh, rabbit cook at his house. So we're going to this old cabin and we're going to eat some rabbit meat. These guys probably don't want the camera. Uh, they're kind of older country folks. So we're just going to drive up and I'll show you the cabin where we're going to eat. And I'm going to go in and eat me some rabbit. Feel my tummy with it. Mm, rabbit's good for your tongue, buddy. But guys, a little background story on where we're going here for this uh, rabbit cook. I live in the country here, but I didn't used to live in the country. I used to live in the city. And I worked at the hospital and I asked around and asked around and finally one guy said, well, yeah, I know somebody that's got some land for sale. So that's how we ended up with the land here. And this is the gentleman that we purchased the land from. And this is his place. So it's kind of cool. We were pulling onto his driveway. So when we paid for the land, I asked him, I said, his name's Clyde. I said, Clyde, you know, now you got all this money, you can pay that driveway. Clyde said, I'm a country boy. I don't need no paved driveway. That kind of stuck with me a little bit, guys. I thought that was pretty neat that, you know, a lot of these folks you think are just dirt poor. Yeah, this guy's got a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank. And we're going out to his house and eat rabbits. That's pretty cool. There's the old cabin. Let's go on in here and eat some wabbit. <laughs> So guys, I felt kind of funny about using the camera in there, but I asked the owner and he's cool with me taking a walk through through this thing. This was an old stable right here behind me. Uh, these, these guys got together and they built a cool old cabin. So we're going to walk through the old cabin and show you what it's all about. Something similar to what we're going to do on the Stony Ridge. So we're walking in the cabin here. It's the old time door handle and the lights off. Turn the lights on here. This is really cool guys. This old cabin was built by several uh, old fellows that were in here eating rabbits. Got a wood stove here and uh, got an old time kitchen. And we just cooked off this old uh, this old timey uh, wood burning stove. I envy this guy. This is awesome stuff right here guys. You got to check it out. Uh, we're going to walk upstairs and show you but all these logs are the original logs from an old horse stable. Can't tell you how neat this is. This is what we want to do on our farm, guys. So keep an eye on the vlog series, guys. You'll be able to see when we take our tobacco barn and convert it into something cool, just like this. 
Awesome, awesome stuff. Good country living. So we're gonna go up the stairs here. You gotta watch our step, got some old squash. Go up here, and this is the upstairs portion. Really neat, got some old beds, old furniture, and uh, just an old time window up here. So simple, good country living. That's what this is all about. So we're back outside here, guys, on the porch. <laughs> See, it says old farts. Uh, these are old cedar posts right here, and it's, it's customary to leave the uh, limbs on here so that you can hang stuff out to dry on the front porch in an old cabin. Uh, we'll walk on out here a little bit. So back here behind me, they've got a chimney built, and uh, basically they took concrete and spackled in between the logs. It's called chinking. We'll walk on around. So this back portion here was added on. It's a stick built area, but they use uh, what's called board and batten. And I'll show you a little closer what board and batten is. So this is the board, and this is the batten between the boards. So that's how they used to do it in the old days. Walk on back here a little bit. So the porch wraps around the uh, cabin in like four different spots. It's in this cool, just country engineering right here. It's a stack of rocks. That's what this thing's foundation is, it's sitting on a stack of rocks. It's not falling in, it's just fine. So here is what we'd call the service entrance. Right behind me, you have the back door, and that goes into the kitchen, which is that separate building. And then we have firewood and just miscellaneous stuff here on the back porch. So cool stuff, guys. Guys, and the ever important exercise bike. Rad. All right, that's it for the vlog today, guys. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Got some cool stuff going on. Neat cabin in here behind me. Having a good old country rabbit lunch. Got my tummy feeling good. It just keeps getting bigger. It's big, beautiful, and awesome. Just like my beard, just like my vlog, just like my farm. So guys, come on down to Sterny Ridge and join me for some more fun. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed it. Come on back and see me. All right? Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge.